Hello everyone, welcome back to the Chemical Engineering Channel. As as you know that we are focusing on heat transfer operation these days, and in this regard, we are bringing the lecture number six. So before starting this lecture, I would request all of my valuable viewers to please subscribe to this channel, click on bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. So in this proceedings, we will be discussing the convection, its fundamentals, types of convection, and law of cooling for it, and we will be solving a numerical related to it. So what is the convection? We have already discussed conduction in our previous lectures. So mm. convection is the mode of energy transfer between a solid surface and the adjacent liquid or gas that is in motion. So obviously there will be a solid surface and there will be again passing through a media which is either gas or liquid and that is in motion. So we can say it as the combined effects of conduction and fluid motion because conduction will take place if there is no fluid motion, we will call it as conduction. There is a bulk of fluid motion, we will call it as conduction plus fluid motion that is equal to convection. And the more will be the fluid motion, the greater will be the convection type of heat transfer. In the absence of any bulk fluid motion, the heat transfer between solid surface and the adjacent fluid is by pure conduction as I have already told you. The presence of bulk motion of fluid enhances the heat transfer between the solid surface and the fluid. But again, it is combined with the effects of complication of determination of heat transfer rates. So this is the overall convection process in the system. Now, if you see, this is a hot block, which is a solid surface. And you can see this T alpha denotes somewhat about room temperature. This Ts shows the temperature at the surface, which is of air. This is area of the surface, the velocity distribution. Now, if there is no bulk motion, then the heat transfer between this block and the layer which is prepared over here is the conduction. But once there is bulk of motion which is flowing around it, the heat transfer mechanism will be called as conduction plus fluid motion that is equal to convection. So this is the overall pictorial representation of the convection. Now there are two types of convection. Number one is the free convection or natural convection and number two is the force convection. As the name denotes in the force convection, obviously we have to use some external media like pump, fan, compressor to proceed the convection process. While in case of the natural convection, there is no external source. The convection will take place due to the buoyancy forces. Like you, you can see if the fluid motion is caused by buoyancy forces that are induced by the density difference. Obviously, we know that once a fluid, which is a gas, is heated up or warm, it moves upward and creates space for the fluid because of density difference. Because once it warms, its density becomes low and it moves upwards and replaces with the heavy denser material. And to understand this problem, you can see that in case of natural convection, this is a hot egg which is placed on this surface and you can see the air is moving due to this density difference. While in that case, a fan is installed or a blower is installed which is supplying heat to cool down this hot egg. So force convection obviously will be faster, natural convection obviously will be slower. But again, the main difference is that natural convection does not require any external media to cause the convection process while the force convection requires the external media to cause the convection process. Again, another thing is that the heat transfer processes that involves the change of phase of a fluid, which we have already discussed in our previous lecture, that latent heat is involved in it and the phenomena is said to be the convection because of the fluid motion induced during the process such as the rise of vapor bubbles during boiling or the fall of liquid droplets during condensation. So obviously we know these two processes, the boiling process and the condensation process. So again, during the phase change of process, the heat transfer mechanism is called as the convection process. Now, just like we have discussed in conduction, where we have studied the Fourier's law of heat conduction, we will have to study the law for convection as well, and that is Newton's law of cooling. And that law states, that the heat transfer by the convection is directly proportional to the surface area and the temperature difference. And obviously there is another parameter and that case that was thermal diffusivity and that case it is convective heat transfer coefficient. So this Q is, is equal to H A S T S minus T alpha where T S is the surface temperature, T alpha is the surrounding temperature or the temperature which is sufficiently away from the surface. So H is the convective heat transfer coefficient which units is watt per square meter degree centigrade or English units as well. AS is the surface area through which convection heat transfer will take place. TS is the surface temperature and T alpha or T infinity is the temperature of the fluid sufficiently far from the surface. 
Note that at surface, the fluid temperature equals the surface temperature of the solid. Obviously, once we are dealing at a surface, both the temperatures will nearly be equal and that is why we will call it as the conduction. But once there is a bulk motion of fluid, there is a temperature gradient and there is a temperature profile as we have seen in the previous diagram, it will call it as the convection process. Now talking about this H which is the heat transfer coefficient for convection, it is not a property of the fluid, it is determined experimentally. It is an experimentally determined parameter whose values depends on all the variables which influence convection such as the surface geometry, the nature of fluid motion, the properties of the fluid and the bulk fluid velocity. So in that case, the scenario is a bit different as that of the thermal conductivity. So let's solve a numerical and see how it proceeds. We have been given a wire which is an electrical wire whose length is 2 meter, diameter is 0.3 centimeter and it extends across a room at 15 degrees centigrade. So T alpha is 15, the length is 2 meter, diameter is 0.3 centimeter. Heat is generated in the wire as a result of resistance heating and the surface temperature of the wire is measured to be 152 degrees centigrade. So the surface temperature is 152, the surrounding temperature or the temperature far from the surface is 15 degrees centigrade. Also the voltage drop and electric current through the wire are measured to be 60 volts and 1.5 ampere respectively. So we have been given the voltage, we have been given the current, so we can calculate the heat transfer rate as we have discussed in our previous lecture. So disregarding any heat transfer by radiation, we are not considering any heat transfer by the radiation, determine the convection heat transfer coefficient or heat transfer surface. So what we need to do assumption steady state again, we have to consider it and radiation heat transfer is negligible in the system. Solution is that the rate of heat loss from the wire will be equal to rate of heat generation is a wire as a result of resistance heating. That is Q is equal to WE VI 60 multiplied by 1.5 is equal to 90 watts. Then the surface area of the wire is area is equal to pi DL. We know the value of pi 3.1415 and so on. Diameter is 0.3 centimeter. So converting it to 2 meter 0 0.003 meter then multiplied by the 2 meter length so it is 0 0.0185 square meter area then Newton's law of cooling is described as q is equal to h a s t s minus t alpha now we know the value of this q we know the value of this area t s is given in the problem statement 152 t alpha is given in the problem statement 15 so rearranging the equation h is equal to q over a multiplied by t s minus t 90.0185 152 minus 15 so we get the answer of this H which is the heat transfer coefficient of our convection is 34.9 watt per square meter degree centigrade. So this is how the convection heat transfer process takes place and this is how the convection heat transfer coefficient is calculated in the system. So that's it from this lecture. Thank you so much. Please do watch, like, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. Till then, it's goodbye. Stay tuned.